Hey guys, welcome back to TC Play. I'm gonna be your host for today and welcome to North Japan. So as you know, myself, Chris and Natsuki all live up here in the north. So today we're gonna to take you around to some of our favorite spots and show you why we love it so much. So today's video is sponsored by the East Japan Railway Company. And I wanna share with you guys some spot that you can visit in Tokyo Station that will probably make your trip a lot easier. They have just opened up the Japan Rail Cafe and you can pop in there and get some information about your trip. You can relax and have a coffee. They have free Wi-Fi. And you can also pick up your JR East Pass for the Tohoku area so that you can come up here and visit all the spots that we're gonna show you today. They have a really beautiful tatami area where you can drink Japanese tea. And they also sell souvenirs from all around Japan and the staff are able to speak English. So no worries, I think this is a really good stop for you guys to visit in Tokyo Station. So you can prepare your trip and not be too stressed out. So first up today is Natsuki, who's gonna show us his favorite spots in Yamagata Prefecture. And I heard Chris is there as well, so you might see him pop in a little bit. Okay, let's go! Hello everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm Natsuki. Today I'm going to show you a very famous food in Yamagata food. Imogashiyaku's Sichu. Potato Sichu. Very famous meat, green vegetable, セイサイナっていうんだよね。ちょっと苦味があって美味しい。大人のテイスト。そして子供のテイスト。チャイルドチャイルドチャリー。そして子供のテイスト。Like Grandma taste. I remember grandma taste. Tengoku no bacha. Thank you. Souvenir. And Yamagata to eba. So, soba okuk. So, shite rame okuk demo arimasu. Cold meat soba. Ato, red hot chili pepper. Wasarezu. Red pudding. Dewa Zakura is very famous in the world. He's champion. <laughs> Do you know my friend? He's famous. Yeah, of course. Chris Broth. Hey, hey, how you doing? Cheers. 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 Don't spill it. Hey, good hey. to see you. Natsuki. You got a lot of stew here. Is it Yonazawa? Yonazawa. Oh, Yonazawa is very. Do you like it? It's amazing. Oh, good to me. So good. Oh. Like a good dream. Nice to meet Please, please give me now. So what's the best stew, Natsuki? And um, which town is it? Which Shonai? Oh, oh Shonai. Yeah. Kore wa? Murayama. Murayama. Mm. Kind of in central Yamagata. Kitama. Okitama. Dokoka. Yonezawa Land. Ah, oh, near Yonezawa, near the beef. This one? Mogami. Ah, oh, Mogami. Mogami River. Shinjo. Yeah, Shinjo. Yeah. Oh, Yamagata. Mmm. It's really good in winter as well. Yeah. But they have um, Imoni Kai, Imoni Stew Party. In uh, mm. parties in sort of autumn, time. yeah, by the riverside, yeah. you go down the river with your friends, eat the amoni, and it's amazing, really quite a nice kind of time of year. Yeah. Yamagata's got some pretty underrated cuisine, underrated, and amoni is one of them. Oh, it's, it's onigiri, the meat on the hike, then. Yeah, guanai. So, usually with onigiri, they have a filling, right? Mm. Like a tuna or salmon. Mm. This is no filling, but the miso paste is put around the rice and then wrapped in cabbage. すげえ美味しいこれ。これ食べてみる。これ食べてみる。でもポパイみたいなさ。ダダダダダダ。ダダダ。ライトポパイ。うん、ライトポパイね。うん。てんてんててんてんてんてんてんてんてんてん。ハ
Ta mở tiền là sư bên nhà. Please give me. He's very famous people in Japanese history. Very important. His jobs, traveler, and make a lyric and poetry. It's very famous poetry. Shizuke Saya, Iwani Shimi Il Semi no Koet. Quiet into the rock, Sekira's voice. Mm, beautiful. Maybe he's ninja. ここまでが地球アースこっからがヘブンオーバーデアヘブンステルアースそしてこの階段を一段ずつ登っていくことで人間の欲望汚い渦邪念を取り除いていってくれるよりクリアな人間に明るい未来が待っているそんな階段を登ってみようワンヘブンツーヘブンスリーステップヘブンやっ軽い いやすごい綺麗だここまで来ると山寺来てよかったってだんだんこう実感湧いてくるとこだからねみんな楽しんでね Finish this. One, two, three. Ah, see that nice panorama view spot. え、今回は東北の山形を担当させてもらいました。どうです？食べ物も美味しかった。うん。あと駅から近い有名なスポットとしてみんなに紹介したかったのがここの山寺です。ぜひ山形に来てください。もっと東北紹介したいけど青森、
I've lived in Sendai for many years now, and it's a beautiful place, love it to bits, but it's more of a jumping off point to lots of other great places, like Yamadera Temple, where we visited yesterday with Natsuki, and also here in Matsushima Bay. We're kind of working our way east towards the Pacific coastline. Matsushima Bay is one of the three most scenic sites in Japan, along with Miyajima in Hiroshima and Amano Hashidate in Kyoto. But for my money, Matsushima is the most special. I mean, take a look at the view. Hundreds of tiny islands out in the bay, the cool sea air breeze, beautiful i love it and today we're going to look at some of the food in sendai gyu tongue literally cow tongue and i can assure you it tastes better than it sounds and also my favorite temple in matsushima ensuin temple which is a really majestic beautiful place which we're going to go to right now let's go I love it here. This is one of the best things about living in Sendai. You can quickly get out of the city, come to the coastline and visit beautiful places like this. This is the Ensuin Temple Garden. It's built in 1646. As you can see, it is magnificent. I come here every now and then when I need to relax and unwind, get away from YouTube. This is the sort of place that I come. I come here at least once or twice a year, actually. And uh, it's at its best in autumn. And we did just miss the snow, unfortunately, but it's still very beautiful, especially the rock garden and the pond around the back. It was actually built in 1646 by Date Tadamune, the son of the legendary Lord Date Masamune. And uh, unfortunately, Tadamune's son passed away. So he built this as a mausoleum for his son and uh, it stood the test of time rather well today. Absolutely magnificent. If you come to Matsushima, put this place at the top of your list. It's an absolutely stunning garden. You come here and feel restored and de-stressed. Beautiful. I don't think we've got enough meat. Oh wait, honestly, on a scale of one to overwhelming dinner, this is a, this is a staggering amount of meat here. Not that I'm gonna complain, we all know I do like meat. Now Sendai was originally famous for its gyu tongue, cow tongue, beef tongue, which we have over here and over here. But in recent years, Sendai's cities kind of capitalized on that success and rolled out Sendai gyu. In recent years, Wagyu A5 Sendai beef has won lots of awards and there's certainly an abundance here. For example, if you come over here, we have uh, Wagyu sushi, which is just some Wagyu on some rice. It's very nice. This has already been seared, so all you have to do there is add a bit of wasabi or soy sauce. Job done. Don't have to cook that, thankfully. Over here, we have gyu tan, which looks pretty hardcore. But what you do is once that's cooked, you take the scissors, chop that up basically, cut that up. And then over here, we have my favourite bit, the bit I'm most excited about, which is an array of different cuts of Sendai beef. For example, this is rib roast here. These are typically served as steaks, but they can also be cooked as yakiniki and prepared on a grill. And of course, freshly grated wasabi there. Beautiful. And finally, more gyutan over here. So much meat. And of course, we have the sauces as well. Another thing about yakiniki is, as well as having a staggering amount of meat, you do get lots of different flavours. For example, there's three types of salt alone. We've got Himalayan rock salt, and we've got shiogama salt, and we've got even finer, more ground down shiogama salt. Shiogama is a port town about 20 kilometres from here, and they have really fresh sushi, and it's famous for its salt. Lots of explanations there, but let's get eating. Less talking, more eating. And I'm gonna kick things off with the one that I wanna eat the most, which is this juicy cut of rib roast. Check that out. On we go, beautiful. Probably won't take very long to cook because A5 beef, the reason it's A5 is because it's very fatty. Uh, so it kind of cooks absurdly fast. Oh, it smells so good. Kind of rich, buttery scent of Wagyu beef being cooked. It can't be beaten. Honestly, it can't be beaten. And then once it's finished, you have the difficult choice on what to go with. Do you have the salt? Do you have the soy sauce? Do you have the tare? I'm gonna go with the original sauce of the restaurant. Dip that in there. Tarikimasu. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Beautiful. It's so juicy. Maybe this isn't enough after all. It's time for some gutan, some beef tun. These look rather appetizing. They've been marinated in salt and pepper and away we go. Now, gutan is very lean. It's very lean, unsurprisingly, because it's just a tongue. Uh, so there's not too much fat. So a lot of the time, people often say that gutan is one of the healthiest, most nutritious cuts you can get when it comes to beef. I think that's rubbish. I do think it's still relatively unhealthy, but nevertheless, it tastes amazing. It is very lean. The tragedy of Sendai is that it's a fantastic city and it's only 90 minutes away from Tokyo by bullet train, right? Hop on Tokyo Station, 90 minutes later, bang, you're in Tohoku in Sendai. But most of my friends, they never come to visit. That's either because I have no friends <laughs> or maybe they just hate me, I don't know. But Sendai is really easy to get to and it's, it's just sad people don't actually come up here and experience it. You can genuinely see all of Sendai, well, most of Sendai, all the good bits in a very long day trip. So I recommend it. If you're in Tokyo or if you come to visit Japan for like two weeks and you've got a day left over, do come up, especially to Matsushima. If you saw earlier, uh, it's absolutely stunning. There's nowhere near Tokyo quite like it. You've got to come here just for that view. And of course, for the Sendai beef. I mean, look at this so much. How are we going to do this? Better start eating, Shuri. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on our whirlwind tour of Miyagi, Sendai, and Matsushima today. We ate a staggering amount of beef. Hopefully, I don't regret that later. But check out next journey to Iwate Prefecture to see Shala and to go on a tour of a stunning hot spring. But for now, guys, for me, many thanks for joining us. Do come to Sendai. Not enough people come here and see it for themselves. It is a magnificent city that I love very dearly. So do come and check it out. But for now, guys, many thanks. I'll see you again soon. Hey guys, so today I am showing you one of my favorite restaurants in Morioka. I'm so glad we had the chance to film here. This is Karakoma and it's a fully plant-based restaurant. So every single dish they have here is made from veggies and it is so good. Every time my friends come to visit me in Morioka, I bring them here. I've probably had about six different friends come to this restaurant and everybody has absolutely loved it. So today I'm going to show you my favorite dish. This is the shogayaki that they have here. It's made with a gluten-based fake meat. It's so good and it tastes so much like the real thing that is kind of creepy. Um, but I can assure you it is one of the best things that you can eat here in Morioka. So please do try it if you come here. This is what it looks like. Doesn't it like, look like meat? It's crazy. It's so tasty. So itadakimasu. <laughs> so good. It's so chewy and the sauces are just like, I want to work here just so I can get the recipes. <laughs> like, that would just make my life if I could cook this food. And look at all the beautiful local veggies that they use. We've got a salad some pickles. I think this is like a stewed daikon. They tend to serve this little side dish a lot and I absolutely love it. It looks kind of purple. I'm not sure what makes it purple, but it's really good. Mm, 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 mm. Um, this one is very interesting. This kind of shocked me the first time I ate it because I thought it was like smoked cream cheese. It's so creamy, but it's actually a tofu. It's like a smoked tofu but it tastes exactly like a smoked cream cheese you put on a cracker. Um, but yeah, I'm going to enjoy my lunch and I really encourage you to come up here and try it if you find yourself in Morioka. I think you'll love it. It's dessert time and I'm more excited than usual for this dessert because I've never had the dessert at this restaurant and if it's anything like their food it's gonna be really good but today's dessert is a strawberry custard tart it looks like and there's a blackberry sauce which is the most exciting part because blackberries are really rare in Japan and I absolutely love them. Oh it's so like creamy and it came with a little tea so nice. Oh wow, that's good. <laughs> the strawberries are so sweet. So winter is strawberry season in Japan. It seems a little weird, but um, I think they do it like that because they use strawberries in Christmas cake here. So they grow them in greenhouses and stuff um, so that they're in season in the winter and they're so sweet right now. And then I think this is a little soy ice cream sorbet, I think they called it. Try that with the blackberry sauce. 
Mm, so good. So our next stop of the day is actually an onsen. So Iwate has lots of really famous onsen and we're going to one today that I've never been to before. So we're gonna experience it for the first time together. And I think we're gonna have a little private bath. So let's head over there now. So now we're at Hotel Shido Taira in Hanamaki. It's located pretty close to Hanamaki Station. We took the train from Morioka Station to here and it only took about 30 minutes. So Tohoku is famous for their onsen and the one we're in right now is called the Kashikiri Bath. So many of the onsen resort hotels have Kashikiri baths that you can rent and use privately. So if you're afraid of being naked in front of people you don't know or if you have tattoos, like I do, this is a really good way that you can enjoy onsen, um, either privately by yourself or with your family or your friends. So the one that we're in today has a really nice view outside and you can enjoy all the different seasons. At the moment, of course, it's winter, so there's lots of snow along the riverbank and it's super pretty. This is such a good way to relax on a cold winter day and I really recommend that you try it out if you come up to Tohoku. It's probably one of the best things you can experience here. check out the souvenir shop which is a really fun part of the onsen resort experience because each souvenir shop has different local specialties and sweets and foods that you can try so that's where we're gonna go next All right, so we are in the omiyage area right now where they sell all the local snacks from this area in Iwate. And they have my favorite, so I wanted to show you guys. These are karinto. But normally when you see karinto in other areas of Japan, they'll look like this. They look quite different. So this is probably what most Japanese people <laughs> will call karinto, these ones. But up here in Iwate, they're a different style and they're absolutely delicious. They come in this big spiral shape Basically, they're just a deep fried cracker that's very sweet and they're very addictive. So if you come to Iwate, I really recommend you purchase this one and try them. I think everybody will love them. So my town, Morioka, is famous for their noodles. There are three different types of famous noodles in Morioka. You can see them all in this little omiyage package. It's super cute. Morioka ramen, which is cold noodles. You eat them cold and they always have some kind of fruit in them, like watermelon or Asian pear. It's so yummy. Really recommend those in the summer. The second one is jajamen, which I've actually never had. Just can't really explain it to you because I don't know what it's like, but it's really famous and it does look pretty yummy. So it's probably pretty good. And the last one is wanko soba. You you guys have probably seen me doing the wanko soba eating competition. They're little bowls of soba and you try and eat as many as physically possible. I think I managed to eat 109 was my record. But uh, yeah, so those are the famous Sun Diamond, three big noodles of Morioka City. All right guys, we showed you some of our favorite spots up here in Northern Japan. I really hope it did inspire you to grab a JR East Pass on your next trip to Japan and come up here and experience Tohoku for yourself. It really is beautiful. Again, a big thank you to our sponsor for today's video, East Japan Railway Company. Make sure you stop by the Japan Rail Cafe in Tokyo Station. Before you plan your trip up to Tohoku, you can sit there, have a tea, enjoy the beautiful scenery and get some information for your trip. Today we showed you where you can go using the JR East Pass, but there are many other different types of passes available. So you can also experience the other areas of Japan. Please let us know which spot you enjoyed the most in this video and where you want to visit when you come up here to northern Japan. Thanks so much for watching guys. Had a great time showing off northern Japan to you and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. I have a really pretty umbrella. I've never held one of these before. <laughs> Can we take a photo? I feel like this is a photo opportunity. <laughs> He's so good at it.